And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to talk briefly about galvanometers. Now, if you've been into a science lab before, you know what one of these are. And these are meters or electrical meters, and they can be ammeters or voltmeters. But the question is, is how do they work? And so what I have here is a demonstration galvanometer. And I've connected up into a simple circuit with a resistor over here and a power pack. So if I turn it on, you can see that the needle deflects. And the amount of deflection seems to be affected by how much current I let in. And that's simply adjusted by the resistance I allow to go through the circuit. If you look closely, you will see that we have a circular ring. Now those circular rings are magnets. Inside that you'll see a coil, tightly wrapped multiple loops of a coil that, are leading, that is sitting within the actual magnet. And clearly the current is passing through that coil. And that current obviously is interacting with the magnetic field and that causes a force. In essence what we have is the motor effect. Let me explain this a little bit further by using some animations. Now before we explain how a galvanometer works, let's remind ourselves of the motor effect. And here I have a loop of wire within a magnetic field. And that magnetic field, of course, is going from left to right. Now, if I were to apply a current to that loop, in this case, let's make the current going into there and out of there, you remember that, of course, that this will turn. And it'll turn due to the motor effect. So the magnetic field lines going horizontally, the current going in this way, this will experience a force in this direction and this will experience a force in this direction. And in essence, you get a torque, it'll turn. But there's a couple of things that will make this not very useful. So first of all, let's replace our coil with a multi-turn coil. So now we're going to get the same effect. Now the number of turns, of course, will make this turn more effectively. The area, of course, also is determining how well this turns. And so that becomes really important as well. Clearly the current going in will make an important aspect of it. And of course the strength of the magnetic field. So all of those combine to produce torque. So torque equals BAIN. But because of the situation here and the fact that the force needs to remain a tangent to the uh, edge of this turning circle, we add a cos theta into this situation so that we understand that it is only the tangential force that contributes to the torque. And you appreciate the fact that as this turns, this isn't a very effective to use for a galvanometer because what you want is you want the current and the torque to be in a direct relationship. This is what you want. And in this situation, describing it here, this won't work at all, because although B, A and N are constant, cos theta isn't constant as it turns. And so that's problematic. You don't get this relationship. So what's the solution to that? Well, the solution is to have two circular magnets. And as you can see, what we have is two sides of the magnet, so that the magnetic fields are going from the outer circle to the inner circle here, and similarly speaking from the inner circle here to the outer circle over here. What that in essence does is that it causes the cos theta to always equal one. The angle between the plane of the loop of wire will always remain parallel with the magnetic field lines. So as it starts to turn, you can see the plane remains parallel. What that of course means is, is that now we have torque equals B a i n the cos theta is now inconsequential and of course we now truly get torque is proportional to current so that's the first step in understanding how a galvanometer works the second thing we now need to do is just to add a pointer so here's my pointer and as you can see if i rotate my loop the pointer moves and the amount that it moves is determined solely by the current because torque is proportional to current. But we have a problem. And that problem is, is that as long as torque is applied, it should continue to turn. Why does it stop at a particular junction? 
Well, the key is to add a spring. Now, in this case, I'm going to use a linear spring. This is going to be our spring over here. And as you can see, the spring changes in tension as it turns. Now, in reality, we actually have a circular spring. But the concept is basically the same. So let's briefly talk about a spring. The fact is the spring applies a force and its force is solely determined by the displacement that it has. That's the x value in this spring formula. K is the spring constant and that is a value unique to each spring. Why is that important? Well, as the needle starts to turn due to the torque, what happens is that the tangential force starts to increase. But as a result, the tension on the spring also increases. So when a certain value is reached, depending on the current, the spring will prevent the actual uh, loop from turning any further. If the current was increased, of course, the force due to the motor effect will actually increase, thereby causing the spring to be stretched out further until such time that the force is equivalent to this force and of course it stops turning. So the spring is the second component to understanding why a galvanometer works. Without it, this would continue to turn, but the spring causes it to stop at the various uh, positions. And as a result, what you get, of course, is a needle that will only move a set amount dependent on the current alone. All that is left now to do is to add a scale. And so now what you can do is calibrate it. You could have it in this case sitting at seven, but you could make this zero if you wanted. And clearly you would then calibrate it by adding a known current to let's say, uh, allowing it to move to a certain position like so. As a result, of course, you could then label that a new value and then you have a galvanometer or an ammeter or a voltmeter dependent on whether you add some resistors and how you connect it up. But in essence, the motor effect within a circular magnet with a spring attached to stop it from rotating beyond the point where you want it to turn. So there you have it, a galvanometer. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching, bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.